Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for bringing us here safely. Thank you for your grace and your mercy you have upon our life. Thank you for all the days of our life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being such a loving and forgiving God. Thank you for everything that you have done for us and all the things that you will do for us in the future. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise your holy name. We continue to do your work, Heavenly Father. We continue to give you all the honor and all the glory. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you for bringing us here this morning. And we hope, Heavenly Father, that, that we receive a, mess, a good message today, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. That everybody who come here today, Heavenly Father, that they will understand your word in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you for our church and Heavenly Father. We ask that you continue to watch over them, guide and lead them in a righteous way, Heavenly Father, for they need you. So we thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. Heavenly Father, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have prayed. And we'll just pray before we take our hymn. We'll, we'll pray one month prayer. In everything in life, there is a purpose. There is a purpose of anything that is done on the surface of the air. You come in here today, I believe you have a purpose. I don't know why you are here t today. Are you here just um, just for a normal, just because today is a, is a Sunday, or then like a, just a religious time? Or are you here for an encounter to meet with the Lord? Say God and say, Lord, Touch my life today. Let me see your glory. Don't look at any any other person. It is you, you. God wants to deal with you and touch you in individually. Say, Lord, I want to see your glory. I need your touch. I need your word in my heart today. Speak to me. As the word of God cannot just it cannot cannot just come and go voided. It will fulfill the purpose by which it is given. As the God will fulfill His purpose in your life today, in your His word in your life today. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless your name. Father, we thank you because unto you we have gathered. And you say we are two or three, we are gathered, you are there in their midst. Father, we thank you because you are standing right beside us. We thank you because we know you are right here with us. To give unto us that, O oh God, which you have created for us from, from the foundation of the world. Father, that which you have prepared for us, eyes have not seen, neither have ears heard the great thing that you've prepared for us today. But none of us will go home the same way we came in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's open our hymn book, GHS 70. H.S. 70. 
Time for search the scripture. Let us pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you once again for a marvelous day. Father, we thank you for a day of blessing. We thank you for a day of understanding. Father, Lord, we thank you for a day of spirit filled heart. Father, Lord in heaven, we thank you for a day that your Holy Spirit is in our souls. Father, 
we thank you for sending your son to take away our pain and to be crucified so that we will have life. Father, that is why we are here this morning. Father, we've come to you with an open heart and an open mind. Father, we have come to receive from you. That's why we're here. Father, let your Holy Ghost talk to us. Lord in heaven, we bless your name. We thank you for the past week. We thank you for shelter. We thank you for food. We thank you for good health. We thank you for joining mercy to the church. Father, now we're about to receive the food of the Spirit. We bless your name. Father, we thank you for everything. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're all welcome in Jesus' name. <clears throat> I will try and be as brief as possible. There's a lot to talk about today. We'll talk about... Um, so I try to give summary of the last so that we can, we can be able to remind ourselves. Again, so to continue from where we stop. So the previous Sunday that we had the last start the scriptures, we spoke about the return of Naomi, how she returned with her sister, sorry, with her daughter-in-law Ruth, because then they discovered that there was plenty in the house of the Lord. It tells us that when we are lost, when we get lost, we should remember that the fruit of the Spirit is back in the house of the Lord that we should always turn around and find ourselves back to God as his children, like Naomi and Ruth did. Then last Sunday, we spoke about two good things. One of them was the message that we heard from our pastor. We heard the message of management. How are you managing yourself financially? How are you managing your family financially? How is the husband and the wife, how are they managing themselves financially? Are they struggling? You know, I was looking at the, the pamphlet for the saddest pictures. There are two hands drawing a rope. Is that how your life is? And the message that we heard from the word of the Lord is that if that is how your life is, you should stop it. And stop pulling the ropes and stand on one side and pull the ropes together. So that as the devil is pulling from one side, you both are pulling from the other side. Amen? We heard that. And I believe and I hope that that sank into your heart. But if it did not, I want you all, please and please, I'm begging you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to pray on the message that we heard last Sunday. And then we also heard about the life of Job and the life of Moses. We compared those two lives to look at how they followed the Lord. One of them was obedient and one was disobedient. And we saw what happened at the end. While Job, Job uh, succeeded, Moses got punishment. He was stopped from going to the promised land, him and Aaron. Amen? So, now that we've gotten the summary of those three messages, you know, I want you all to take a minute and meditate about it. You know, talk to the Lord and tell the Lord that, you know, let his words sink in your heart. I want you, when you go home, Tonight, my brothers and sisters, meditate on the word of the Lord. Be wise. The next time, by the grace of God, when I come here, I'll talk to us about why we are not successful as children of the Lord. It's because that we refuse to plan our lives the way God has wanted us to plan our life. We see that even God himself, he had a purpose when he created the heaven and earth. He did his work in six days and he rested for one day. He had a design. Do you have a design for your life? If you don't have a design for your life, I want you to pray about it. We're going to talk about that next time. But today, by the grace of God, we're going to talk about Ruth and Naomi again. So we're looking at lesson 680, by the grace of God. On our side, the scriptures, volume 53 to 56 is on page 25. The lesson is on page 25. Roots, pity, and hard work. Today's message is going to be hard on us. Today's message is only talking to us about a virtuous woman. Are you a virtuous woman? 
And then we will see how part of the message also affects us as men in the house of the Lord. If your life is not as that of Ruth, I plead with you, my sisters, today, re-examine your life and live the life of Ruth. We'll see today. And we'll see some of the lessons that we learn from Ruth herself as brothers in the house of the Lord. That if your heart, life is not like that, you need to learn. Amen? Let's look at, take our memory verse from Ruth chapter 2 verse 12. You can either open your Bible to Ruth chapter 2 verse 12 or you can go ahead and uh, open your side the scriptures to um, page 25. Let's take it together after the count of uh, two. One, two. The Lord recompense thy work and the full reward be given thee of the Lord, God of Israel. Under whose wings thou art come to trust. Ruth chapter 2 verse 12. Is that, is that the word that the Lord is talking about on you? That the reward of, of your hands. You know, the reward of your own work. That the work that you're doing, you know, are the prayers that let the Lord reward the work, the work of your hands. Hard work. Hard work pays, I will tell you because it, is, uh, it has happened uh, to me. I'm talking from experience that uh, my brothers and sisters hard work pays. Don't be deceived that hard work doesn't pay. Hard work always uh, pays. I will see here from the word of the Lord that um, Ruth, through her dedication, through her dedication to the uh, work of the Lord and through her dedication to her mother-in-law it pays my brothers and sisters so let's open our Bible to um, to the book of Ruth that's why our text is going to be taken from uh, the book of Ruth the book of Ruth chapter chapter 2 the book of Ruth chapter 2 Ruth chapter 2 we we'll read from verse 1 to 23 praise the Lord Amen we will be on time by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ Ruth chapter 2 Verse 1, and Naomi had a king's man of her husband, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, let me now go to the field and glen ears of corn, after him whose sight I shall find grace. So we'll look at it in, in, in the in the days in Israel. Growing up, I saw this also that during harvest, if you have a farm when you harvest, you don't harvest everything. You don't harvest everything. You leave a little for the people who are needy, people who cannot farm will call and glen. They will take from what is left. So it shows that our Father in heaven cares for the poor. You know, cares for the needy. And, and, and you know, and so she, she said to her mother-in-law, and she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field, um, verse 3, after the reapers. And her hip was so, to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kinder of Elimelech. Praise the Lord. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And there, and there answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto his servant, That was sat over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabite, uh, Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, 
let me glean and gather after the reapers among the shivers. For she came and had continued even from the morning until now, that she tarried a little in the half. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glen in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art athirst, Go unto the vessel and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, I had fully been shown me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thy husband and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity and art come unto a people which thou knowest not hath uh, for. The Lord recompense thy work and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel under whose wing thou art come to trust. Then she said, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for that thou hast comforted me and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thy handmaid, thou, thou I be not, though I be not like unto one of thy handmaid. And Boaz said unto her, At meal time, come thou heifer, and eat of the bread, and dip thy muscle in the vin uh, vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her perched corn, and she did eat, and was and was sophist and left. And when she had risen up to glen, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glen even among the servants, and reproach her not. And let, and let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them, that she may glen them and rebuke her not. So she gleaned in the field until even, and beat out that she had glen. And it was about an ephah of barley. And she took it up and went into the city. And her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. And she brought forth and gave to her that she had reserved after she was sophist. And her mother-in-law said unto her, What hast thou gleaned today? And where wrongest thou? Blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. And she showed her mother in law with whom she had wrought and said the man's name with whom i wrought today is boaz and naomi said unto her daughter-in-law blessed be he of the lord who had not left off his kin a kindness his kindness to the living and to the dead and naomi said unto her the man is near of kin unto us one of our next king's men and Ruth the Moabat said, He said unto me also, That thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all harvest. And Naomi said unto Ruth, her daughter in law, It is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, and that meet thee not in any other field. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glen until the end of barley harvest and of wheat harvest and dwelt with her mother-in-law may the lord bless his word in jesus name i decided to read all just in case for people who did not the message is actually very very important to us so we read about elimelech's wife naomi how they went because of famine in their land that elimelech took his family himself, his wife, and his two sons to another, uh, 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 to the city of Moab. And then he died. His son married, uh, his two sons married, and they, they, they also died. And then one of the daughter-in-laws refused to go with Naomi. But Ruth persisted 
and, and went to Bethlehem. And we saw how they were received in Bethlehem. You know, how everybody was talking about Ruth. How she left her gods and followed the living God of Naomi. How many? How many? How many of us sisters today do the same? How many? How many of us sisters today follow the lead of the husband? How many today? Even after the husband died, Naomi became, sorry, Ruth became persistent. How many? How many of us sisters? That's why I decided to read this and I said that I'm not trying to be hard on the sisters. If you are blaming me, you have to blame the word of God. Amen. It's not coming from me. But we'll see a portion that we'll talk to our brothers also. We read about how it is that when we move to greener pasture, we should prayerfully do it. Elimelech took his family along with him without prayerfully doing it. And put his family in harm's way. Amen. But Naomi turned around. She turned around and said, I'm going back. I'm going back to the land of the Lord. You know, Ruth will have, after going back, Ruth will have said, well, I'm a stranger. I'm going to stay at home. I don't know these people. Ruth will have stayed at home lazy. She will have said, this is not my mother. This is just a mother-in-law. Why do I even need to suffer myself? You know, a lot of times we don't know that the actions that we take, people are watching. <clears throat> you know, what I heard uh, from some of my colleagues at work is that, uh, you know, if you know the, uh, the, 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 uh, the ailment, attention deficiency syndrome, they call it ADHD. Um, they, 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 they say that, uh, some of them say I have ADHD because that I'm always working, you know, when I'm at work. And I said that, uh, you know, I made a joke at them that I'm ADHD on sweetness, so with no drugs. So, 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 so <laughs> praise the Lord. So, so what do I mean by that? That uh, even though you see that I'm very, very active, I'm always smiling. Even that work is hard. I'm working on my feet. I'm running around all the time. But I'm still smiling and laughing. That is the sweetness part of it. Amen. It's the joy of the Lord. And people look at that. You know, for your actions, everything you do. I heard some of them were saying, ah, when you work with Benjamin, you have to tighten your belt. Because he will keep you on your toes. You have to keep working. There is no laziness around him. What are people saying about you? It is not the words that we speak, but the actions that we take. Every hard work pays, let me tell you. Christ himself came down and worked hard so that he would be crucified for, my, for me and you. It's hard work. Even him, while he was on the cross, he said, Father, take this cup away from me if it is my will. Even God himself worked very hard for six days, creating the heavens and earth and creating me and you through Adam. He worked hard. And then he rested on the seventh day. Amen? That is why we have day off. We have days off. Hard work always pays. You know, when the promotion comes, they're going to pick you. When something comes, they're going to pick you. And so, so it, like in our department, there are about 200 of us. They selected two of us to go to, to Boston, to the Executive Leadership Institute. It's a selection from all over the U.S. And we are just about, I think, about 15 or 20 of us that are going to attend the Leadership Institute. I didn't ask for it. But they just said if there's somebody who's working hard, there's somebody who will represent us. 
you know let's slot in benjamin's name let him apply and see if he gets it or not so they were slotting your name but you also have to apply the application is very tedious went through the process i'm not saying this to exalt myself but it's just an example that when we come to the pulpit let us always give testimony so that we we'll encourage our brothers and sisters in the house of the lord that the lord is always there for me and you i'm giving testimony that god who liveth, god who has asked us to work hard will always reward your hard work even if you're a minister of god let me tell you pastor kumui who is our um overseer he works very hard he doesn't joke around. Who wrote this? He wrote it. Even Pastor Dada, who is here. Some of our brothers would testify that they would sometimes call him at one in the morning. He would answer the phone call. It's hard work. He should have been sleeping and switch off his phone. Hard work pays. Be it in the house of the Lord or in our secular lives. It pays, and that is why Naomi got the recognition. That's why I told you that today is going to be half and half, you know, half for our sisters and uh, half for our our brothers. Amen. Praise the Lord. She didn't want to become a burden to her sister-in-law. She did not. This is where 15 minutes is going to be hard for my sisters. Praise the Lord. You know, in the description, I think in the book of Proverbs, by King's uh, uh, Lumel description, he said, A virtuous woman seeketh wool, flax, and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. It's in the book of Proverbs. She bringeth her food from afar. Proverbs 31. 13 and 14, we read it the last time that we spoke about our sisters in the house of the Lord. She willingly is not grudging. You know, you go home and you bring something home to eat. Uh, you're telling your husband, look at you. A foolish man. You are not a hard worker. I'm the one feeding you. So what are you going to tell me? It says, willingly with her hand. Praise the Lord. You know, do you know that nothing in the house of the Lord happens without a reason? The children that God has given unto you is for a purpose and a reason. The wife that, the, that God has given unto you is for a reason and a purpose. The husband that God has given unto you is for a reason and a purpose. The brothers and sisters and the cousins and uncles is for a reason and a purpose. But we refuse to look at those reasons. We whine and complain all the time. Be wise and smart. You know, I will tell you one secret that every day, you know, I think about the church. I mean, I think about all you guys. I try to avoid anything that will break this church. I have said it here that all my actions are calculated. I watch and I pray and I listen. Whenever I see the hands of the enemy pushing towards, I do things to mitigate that. We need to be purposeful. She demonstrated the virtues of industry. Praise the Lord. She is a hard worker. Are you a hard worker? Are you working hard? Are you complaining? You know, I came back from work the other day and uh, I was seriously limping. So my wife kept looking at me and when we were going to go to bed, she said, you're seriously limping and you didn't complain, you didn't say anything. I said, it's nothing. She said, can I take a look? My leg was slightly swollen because I sprang my leg at work. And she said, you're not complaining. I said, why should I complain? Why should I whine? I'm not a child. And the next day, I picked up myself, 
she helped me with a little bit of a mentor. I prayed over it and took a little bit of ibuprofen, woke up in the morning, my leg was <coughs> back strong, the swollen was gone. Picked up my bag and back to work. Nobody ever knew at work. You know, the song says, why do you worry when you can pray? Trust in Jesus that he will lead the way. Don't be like doubting Thomas, but trust in all his promise. Why worry, worry, worry when you can pray? You know, I can stand here and talk. If I talk to you, if I stand here and talk to you about what I've gone through in life and I'm still going through, you know, believe it. People think that I don't have problems. Because I'm smiling all the time. Because you know the reason why as the problem comes, I know I have problems, but I put it in the back of Jesus. I take the smile away because I know that he has taken it away. Be wise. Ruth decided to go to Glen. Uh, as we have read in the scriptures that <clears throat> Boaz purposely told the man sometimes drop some of the fruit so that she will pick it. Say purposely drop it. She found favor. If she was lazy and said, I don't know this place, she would never have found favor. Who knows what must have gotten between her and her mother-in-law? Nobody knows. Because it's not written here. Maybe her mother-in-law is somebody who whines and complains all the time. And then she'll have said, I'm tired of this old woman. Even when Naomi was saying, I'm old, I'm useless. Ruth still said, I'm going with you. A Ruth's reaction to challenges. When they returned to Bethlehem, they had lost everything. We know that Naomi lamented. In Ruth chapter 1 verse 21, I went out full and the Lord had brought me home again empty. But let me tell you, Ruth had made up her mind. Have you made up your mind to follow Jesus? Have you made up your mind to say that my family is very important to me? Have you ever asked yourself, do you, have you ever asked yourself that why, why this, I have spoken about it on this pulpit. Hear this, and I want you to pray and ask God for your own answer about this question. Right? The scripture says that there is no marriage in heaven. There is no brother and sister in heaven. There are no children in heaven. Then why would God give you a wife? Children. Why? And make it your own responsibility. If you read in the New Testament that a bishop or leader in the house of the Lord is somebody who takes care of his family. Why? Why will it be a responsibility in your hands? Have you asked yourself? And my sisters, why will God burden you to say, well, this is the leader of the home that I have to listen to? Why? I want you all to go and prayerfully, because God, let me tell you, God created us and made sure that he gave us situations that will help us lead us to heaven that structure that God has placed is to make us see and learn so that we'll know how to adore him because like he has mentioned about the love between the father and the son he says will the child come and ask for food and the father will give snake he says no he's comparing he's telling us that look, look at, he's telling us that look at the love that you have for your own children. That I even have much more love. So God has practicalized Christian living here on earth. But we have all refused to see it. How are you reacting to challenges? Ruth made up her mind. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do it. I'm going to glean. I'm going to bring food. 
She will have speaking, uh, you know, she will have speaking, she will have speaking all, she will have been talking about all bad things about her mother-in-law. Do we lose things and then we become foolish? We become discouraged. And then we backslide and start talking bad about God. That wasn't the, that wasn't the example that we saw from Ruth and Naomi. Ruth demonstrated resilience. She was determined and she was convicted that her decision is right. Are you determined? Are you convicted? Your decision is right to follow Jesus. Are you convicted? Are you, are, are, do you have the decision? I didn't make the decision. Now the family you are in, whether it be the children God has given you, the wife God has given you, the husband God has given you is for a reason, and you are determined. Ruth was obedient. She respected Naomi. Are you that virtuous woman? You know, do you curse at your mother-in-laws? Are you determined? Do you respect? Do you follow the scriptures where God has asked? to respect are you she was loyal she was trustworthy are you trustworthy are you loyal to your father in heaven even at your work are you loyal at work are you loyal in your family are you loyal to your family can you be trusted can everything you say in the house be trustworthy or you, do you dilly dal and say things to fit your own self? God is watching you. You know, at work I was telling my colleagues that I will always and always be transparent. That I'm not afraid to say the truth. Be transparent all the time. The truth will always bring, let, let everyone lie. I will not. If something goes wrong, I say something is wrong. Something goes right and I say something is right. You either believe me because our father says our year should be year and our name be name. Ruth said, let me go and glen she told her mother-in-law so that I will find favor and grace in his sight. And the mother-in-law says, go. Moabad is the king's man of Elimelech. God through Moses instituted the the, the the laws of king, men, and communal life. What is communal life? Like I have said, community and king's men. You know, whereby, so by, God takes care at the beginning, I said, God takes care of the needy. So that when they, when they, when they remove things from the, the, the field, they don't remove everything. God cares about the poor to live a little. So that the poor will go to the field and harvest and glen so that they can leave. Do you show mercy? Do you help the poor? In every society, God recognizes that. See, there's always, it's always going to be the privileged and the underprivileged. You know, sometimes we find ourselves, look, I, I don't boast of my status I, I look at myself as any other person as any other person on the street even the person who is begging on the street I look at myself as the same you know but we have people who are pompous who brag because they've been fortunate either to be born into a family that has money a family that allows them to go to school and acquire skills. 
or they are born into countries that are rich that allows them the opportunity to get the skills so that you know they can have whatever they want they look down on others that is not the design of God God understands he said the privilege to help the successful to help the less successful to pull one another up God cares for the poor you can read that in Exodus 23:11 and Leviticus 9:10 Taking advantage of that provision Ruth requested from her mother-in-law and she went and gleaned the field and she was blessed God is still in the business of guiding in fact it was the Lord in heaven that guided her footsteps because of her mind God is still in that business of guiding your footsteps to where you're supposed to Get what he wants you to have as long as you're humble, hardworking, respectful, diligent, and righteous. We'll find that in Psalm 37, 23. A rich man's responds to the less privileged. We saw with Boa. You know, Boa. Naomi was guided by the Lord to Boaz. And we saw how Boaz treated Naomi from our text as we read. She was invited to the table to eat. In fact, she, he even said, please, when you, they told the men, when you are plugged, when you are removing, allow some to drop. Allow some of them to drop on purpose. That was... Boaz responds. Boaz created an atmosphere of family. He goes and talks to the people in the farm, like family. That should be our response. That when you're a child of God, the Lord has blessed you, and you have a farm or a company, or you have in the big position, to treat others with respect. He treated them like family. We're not bullying them around. You know, a lot of times, wealth brings pride. The Bible warns against it. We can see that in Ephesians 6, 9, 1. The relationship between Boa and Boaz and his workers brings humility to my heart. And that is what is expected of us as the children of God. And we saw how hard work, like I have said, Naomi enjoyed kindness from Boaz because of her hard work. She was even surprised of how Boaz noticed her in the midst of everyone. Are you being noticed everywhere because of your dedication, because of the Holy Spirit in you, because of the fact that you're the child of God, you're living your life uh, righteously. Still, it doesn't mean that the Lord asks that the rich should help the poor, that then we should become lazy and refuse to work. Widows a lot of times depend on others, but we've seen here that Ruth refused to do that. We've seen how in the olden time, you know, widows were enslaved because they have no one to watch over them. But we've seen the reaction of Boaz, how he treated Ruth. Ruth will have said, well, I'm independent. I'm working now. You know, I, I can bring food. And will have told Naomi, you cannot tell me anything. But, but let's look at this. Every time she will ask for excuse from Naomi, what a virtual woman. She will have said, I'm independent. You know, are you the wife that is saying, I'm working, I'm making a lot of money now. I can just do whatever I want. I don't have to talk to my husband. 
Or I can just up and leave the house. I don't have to discuss with my husband first. God has made him the head of the house. You know, look at Ruth. It's not even her mother. Her mother-in-law. Her husband is there. She still goes to ask for permission. What a noble woman. Probably my sisters will be preparing stones now to throw at me. Because I said that uh, they need to ask their husband. <laughs> Pray, praise the Lord. So, amen. I'm glad that everybody is listening and we have made the Shadow Scriptures uh, a discussion class. Praise the Lord. It doesn't mean that when you're self-sufficient. See, it, let me tell you secrets in my sisters. I will say this and then I'll close because I'm done. But I just have to say this. My time is well spent. I'm glad we're at this point now. I had a student. Maybe I've told this story on the puppy. They se she separated from her husband. And uh, they were still living in the same house, but we were not talking to each other. I didn't know. I know I had contact with her for a long time. So she called me. She talked, 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 and when she finished talking, and then she said, uh, I said, look, I wouldn't have taken the call if you are not my student, so, uh, before. And then she said, are all men the same? I said, yes. She said, what? You are not the same. I said, no, we're the same. It doesn't matter. She's Asian. I said, look, black, white, red, yellow, whatever color and face that you see, we're all the same because we are created by God. She said, yes, I remember you told me I'm reading the Bible. We're all the same. Our behaviors are the same. I'll give you a tip. And tells me, if that tip doesn't work, I'll be willing to go and find $1,000 anywhere and give you. But if the trick works, you have to go around and find $1,000 and give me. And I say, why the fight? I say, do these simple things. When your husband comes back from work today, you come back earlier than him, right? Take his back from him. Before he comes, make sure that food is ready. So before he got home, food was ready, the house was clean. And uh, as soon as he got back, she took his bag, removed his coat, and uh, even told him, sit down, remove his shoes, and say, you need to go and shower. He was like, ah, are you trying to kill me today? She said, no, it's an experiment. So went to his shower and then, uh, came to the table, food was there, he finished eating. He said, is there poison in this food? Since with all the fire, she said, no. I see that uh, <laughs> my sister is laughing. I'm glad that, you know, I've been able to keep everyone awake. Praise the Lord. I've overshot my time, but um, I just need to tell this story. And then, uh, the reason, so, and, uh, so, the, she didn't say a single, the next day she did the same. She continued like that for a week. And the husband sat her down, said there must be something. Probably you're trying to get away from this marriage by killing me so that uh, you may take all the life insurance and everything. She said, no. Do you remember my professor? She said, yes, because the husband knows me. Say he was the one who gave me this advice that instead of getting to to toe, nail to nail with you, I should observe and be a better one. And, uh, and the last thing that I told her was like, make a list. Make a list of everything that you want to do. Make a list of things that you need to be done in the house. The life, your life, everything that you guys need to do. Make a list and go and give it to him. I said, kneel down, give it to him and say, my dad, you know, this is the list for the house. I don't know what you think. Just give it to him. She made the list, she gave it to him. And he looked, yeah, this is good, this is good. Uh, let's do everything. 
So she called me and said, who is ruling the house now? I said, you are. Because she's making the decisions in the house. He just rubber stamps it. And today, by the grace of God, they have three children. And it's continuous like that. She writes everything down. She told me that since that day, he has never said no to everything that she says. You know, in most African countries, they'll say the husband has, uh, sorry, the wife has taken him to Juju house and he's tied, tied his spirit somewhere. That's why my sister is laughing. That's why, you know, the husband is there. Uh, no. It's because of the glory of the Lord and the favor that Ruth found in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's take our question and then uh, I can go home now. So that uh, before the sister strangled me. Amen. Mention some reactions that people put up in times of adversity. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Mention some reactions that people put up in the times of adversity. Their reactions. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What lessons can be learned from Boaz, nobility, and humility? What can we learn from his nobility and humility? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mention some condemnable ways the less privileged are treated in our communities. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The man. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. From Boaz and Naomi's instruction to Ruth, how can a Christian pilgrim remain consistent to the end? How can you remain consistent to the end? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Fa Praise the Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. We bless your name. Father, as we have heard from you this morning, Father, Lord, in heaven, let your spirit talk to each and every one of us. Father, God, in heaven, even our faces are different. Father, our needs are different. Father, meet our needs today. We've looked at the life of Naomi. It has taught us fathers and mothers in the house of the Lord, brothers and sisters in the house of the Lord, how we need to live our life diligently. Father, Lord in heaven, continue to enrich us. Father, with wisdom, and Father, let our lives be like a, a Ruth. Lord, we bless you. We thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I do not know if anybody has any question about what we have learned. I told us we have so good teachers in the Deeper Bible Church of Charlotte that when they teach, it's like uh, we should just come to the end of the study scripture. 
but it is one of the systematic of the church that after the teaching of the Sadi scripture the people should be able to ask questions not like uh, after the Simon uh, because sometimes I the way the teacher was teaching what I learn may be quite different from what you learn but when you look at it it is only the site which you are able to ask questions except in the house fellowship don't need the Simon we don't ask question so I know that I really want to water down what the teacher have taught or want to show more wisdom or knowledge but just to follow the church uh, system matic uh, program and then the second part of it is that uh, uh, how will you know that I'm listening how do you want to know that's a uh, I'm prepared to to be armored and to be answer the question and God is going to help every one of us in Jesus name is that any question like uh, there's still a question that is have been bothering me since last year when our teacher came and preached about me and then this year when he came to I still you know I quickly say I don't want you to remember my was the way you are my was last year although the message was balanced this year but that thing question is still bothering me that's okay we have some people both men and men and then that's why i said that we look for the day we are going to have a seminar about finances in the family and then the, what is the nature of god what is the side of god there are some men they walk 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 was no way. It is truly the we will say that they should pray, which is one of those things. But the more they are working, the more they we may say some do not have holiness. We may say some do not have, have no God, but we have seen some people that they do not have holiness. And they are making it and the work of their hand is being blessed and there are some women that work 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 but there's nothing to show for it in the other way as our teacher told us today uh, i'm talking about still the reason why we need to be asking questions or the reason why we will and to let you know that i too i'm listening in other way uh, one is going to be blessed in the family in my language they say there's no way the three generations they don't pour so one is going to be blessed and when one is being blessed like uh, in most culture and then even in the bible I think until we trash something in the house fellowship one day about uh, women should not be a provider for the house or something like that, I think Sister Priscilla will remember until we are able to read it from the first one to the end and we see what is mean. Uh, culturally, many people always believe that men should be the provider of the house and then uh, although I've not seen where Bible say it, maybe I've not read my Bible enough. The only one people always say they're about is it that Timothy and we trash it that God was not telling that any man that was not able to provide for the family is a human. Bible was not saying that. The way people only take it. I think we're able to read it from first one to two, and we saw the but in many that's what we still discuss in my place of work yesterday it's like god i wish this place is full today and we still discuss this for more than one hour yesterday with my co-worker okay but whereby the man is being blessed 
does that mean the wife is useless and then his hard work is not being blessed by God? Or where the woman is being blessed, does that mean the man is useless? And as a result of that, there shouldn't be respect at home for him. And then many times we men, men, we women, we make our house uh, the enemy of our spouse. Because by the time your husband couldn't make it, and then uh, any time the husband come or there's a little thing, all what you remind your husband is that you should have been the breadwinner of this house. And this is the husband that is working hard, doing everything, that everything should be done accordingly. But there's nothing, many, many, very, I'm very sorry to make mention, but if I've made mention, you know that I'm proud of him. Many people were born the day Benjamin was born. Many people were going to, they went to school together. If we accept with me that there are many people that are brighter than him. But the grace of God have uplifted him to where he is now. Um, I remember there was a, when I was in school, there was a boy that very, very brilliant. At the long run, all what he did was a carpenter. Here I am today. Should I say because that person he was in that way, he was useless? Or we, are we going to say because the husband cannot provide, then the house becomes so hot for the husband that even when he's coming home, or when there's a little thing that's a reference that you are a useless man, you're supposed to have been the breadwinner. Or should we say because the wife couldn't read? The way we men we pursue academy, then that wife is useless, doesn't have brain. Then when the wife is coming, it's like I mean don't do United before my husband. So the two questions are still I have answered to them to me, but the problem is that those people whom you are living with, did they understand? And then when husband is patient, when wife is patient, do we take the opportunity? Do we read the word of the Lord before we say one thing or the other to our spouse? Uh, I'm a disciple of uh, G.S. I'm a disciple of Pastor Dada. And then many times I've sat down with them. I'm flying about uh, in the book of Acts. About uh, Anavara, uh, is it Analaya and Savira? The book of Acts, chapter 5, 1 to 2. I've decided I'm not going to be using a sample again out of the Bible. I have brought many examples that show physical things, a lot of things, how we men, women, making the house an enemy for our spouse. Because to come home become something it's going to be thinking about. All because, not that he doesn't want to be blessed, not that she doesn't want to be blessed, but because he was not blessed the way the husband, the way the wife wanted, then And then we always say the kingdom of God is the most important thing. That if one of you, my wife, cannot make it, as far as you make it to the kingdom of God, it's okay. My husband, as far as you cannot make it, as far as you make it to the kingdom of God, it's okay. But by the time we make the house out and the husband wants to go and make one thing or the other in order to be rich, in order to be using the best deals. What shall benefit you, you husband? What shall benefit you, you wife? I do not say anybody should be lazy. 
and then this is a call that if you are lazy, Bible does not support it. Bible does not support it if you are do, and that's what the Bible was telling us in the book of food that it was not I do, and it is because of it not uh, not being I do. That's why Boaz able to saw in. Let's say he was at home sitting down, looking at the face of the in-law, the old woman. That after all, I make a choice to come, and I come. Now, dear, your place is blessed. You must provide for me. Ruth didn't do that. He went. So there's no room for idleness. But Paul was looking at it and said, Yes, I believe. I'm the least among the call. But if I, Paul, is watering, and Apollo, if I, Paul, is planting, and Apollo is watering, if there is no blessing of the Lord, then what do I want to say about those people who are a disciple before me, Peter, Andrew, Matthew, and all other disciples that we don't even hear about their name, but here I am. The, when you are talking about Bible, three over four of the Bible, I mean, one over four of the Bible is about me. Then what do, I, do you want to tell me because I'm hard working? Why the blessing upon, upon me is more than them? So now look at it. He said, if I, Paul, is planting and Apollo is watering, if there is no blessing of the Lord, oh, it's, it's all those things I said we are going to have similar and we are going to trash them out, not because of any other thing, so that our house can be smooth. Our teacher have told us many things today that okay if your wife is being blessed fine if your husband is being blessed fine and he has told out all the consequences but my problem is that is that what are they thinking in our mind to the extent that you husband one day you will call your wife that your wife is so useless he can't use a the 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 they, they, they call it the, the end of the bottle to write zero. Now you say it doesn't have brain. And then the wife will look up and down. It's like, let me go and poison myself. Or you wife, you call your husband. That what about that man? What about that man? It's even better than you. The, what we are telling the husband is that I will have married that man. But so the, the, the question is, what do you want to say about it? What do you want to say about it? Do you, are you praising the life of God on that particular husband? Or are you praising the love of God on that one? Every day, the wife is crying, the husband is crying. That why I'm not this, why I'm not that. On the tongue. Papa said, if that wife is working, an husband is working, if there are no blessing of the law on it, all is vain. We have seen husband and wife that work together and in the book of I at chapter one verse two. At chapter one verse two. I mean at five one to two. The book of Acts five one to two. Get me right. There's no laziness in the Bible. There's no laziness in the Bible. There's opportunity if you call upon the name of the Lord. 
but he said, Paul, I love. Esau, I hate. I mean, Jacob, I love. Esau, I hate. Who are he to query? Who are you to query God? This is Jacob that was. He was the one that created Jacob. He was the one that created Esau. And he put them in the same stomach. But he said, what has Jacob done? That's how you will see God is God. Who is going to query him? That one does not give room for laziness. In the book of Acts, chapter 5, in the book of Acts, chapter 5, but a certain man named Ananiah with Savira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. Look at what happened there. They are doing business together, they are doing everything together. They know how the money is coming in, how the coming is coming out. That's one husband and wife. They are doing the same thing together. We have such a family. That they, they are in the same level. And then we have another, another family. We have another family. Let's look at the book of Ruth, chapter 2. The book of Ruth, chapter 2. The book, we have saw us a family that they are doing the same thing together. They are doing business together. To the extent that when the husband wants to sell, the wife was there. The, the husband cannot take the decision without the wife. But we have another family, the book of I. The book of Ruth. Chapter 2. The book of Ruth, chapter 2. The book of Ruth, chapter 2. Uh, anybody that sees it can read for me. It's after Judges. Sometimes when I'm on the pulpit because of the because of time. The book of Ruth, chapter 2. And then let me read. I will read 2 to 3. And Ruth the Mobile said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the feet and glee air come. Yes, of corn, after in, in Wooster, I shall find great. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. This is a family. Wife is free. To the extent that when the husband has gone, it becomes the responsibility of that woman to be taking care of the mother of the husband. So we have seen two. Analia and Savira, both of them, husband and wife, the same level. In this family, wife, half upper hand, because it has energy and is devoted. And it was the one that was the, I mean, what do they call it? Food, something of their family, breadwinner of their family. But because of his humility of his total submission, we see what God did. And then we can see that one from the beginning of our life. That it totally depends on, on God. Then we see another family. Let's look at the book of Genesis chapter 27, verse 9. Genesis 27, verse 9. Genesis 27, verse 9. I've taken our time, but sometimes it's necessary. When we are calling ourselves a believer and we do not know the Bible. And the only believer is more better than we, that we are calling ourselves the children of God. Genesis, Genesis 27, verse 9. Genesis 27, Genesis, let me read 26, 17. 26, 17. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerak and were there. And Isaac dug again the well of water, which they had dug in the day of Abraham his father. For the Philistine had stopped them after the death of Abraham. Did you hear anything about, about uh, Rebekah there? No. God gave Isaac the strength. 
and the opportunity and the blessing to recover all the blessing of Abraham. The vicar was not mentioned. In the, in the case of Analaya Sabra, Analaya Sabra was mentioned. In the case of Ruth, no, no man was mentioned. Only Ruth. In the case of Isaac, only Isaac. Sarah was not mentioned. So there's no situation in your house that is happening that has never happened, that has never happened in the Bible. But because all of them devoted to the Lord, God bless, uh, God bless who? God bless uh, Rebecca, I mean, God bless Isaac, God bless uh, 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 Ruth. The only reason why God did not bless an alliance is that they manipulated. Because God has blessed them already to the extent that they have a position to sell. What about those people who don't have a position to sell? Because the Bible was telling us they are selling their position so that they can share with the poor. Then they are rich already. Just because of their agreement, they were rich. It was when they are now remember the poor, they are selling their position. And they, they manipulated. So we have seen those three people in different category, whereby husband and wife we come together. Wife has upper hand, and husband has upper, uh, upper hand. You want to ask me, what about Rebecca? Rebecca was at home. In the book of Genesis, chapter 27, verse 9, this is how you will know that Rebecca was at home. The book of Genesis, chap chapter 20, 27, verse 9, 27, verse 9. 27 verse 9. Go now to the flock and fetch me from there two good kids of the goat, and I will make them serve, serve me. For your father shows as he love. All what is do what all what he do, she does at home is cooking. Take it care of the husband. To the extent that he know the kind of the food that the husband cannot re I mean, resist. That's how you know that God blessed Asi Kilo and he covered the wife. God blessed Ruth and he covered the, uh, the old household. God blessed the two of them. The only thing they did they manipulated. So why are you personally your wife? That is a useless woman. If God has blessed you, fine. One plus one is one. Why are you useless in your husband? As if he does not know how to do it. If God has blessed you, fine. It is grace of God. But why can't you now come and act together before they go astray? And so that God will bless you. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. And by the power and the blood of Jesus, I will not use my hand. To destroy my house. To rise up, call upon the name of the Lord. If Paul planting, Apollo water it. If there's no blessing of the Lord, all this in vain. If your husband, you are making it. And the grace of the Lord is upon your work. Do not forget, it is God that blessing your work. Do not make that wife a useless wife. Somebody that does not have brain. Somebody that is not smart. I've asked us, what does Esau did? To the extent that I ate, God said I ate him. But that shows us whom his God is. He can do. Who is going to query him? If you, it is why God has making way for you. Why are you making your husband a sad person or what? That she even thinking. If there's a way, I can make money. 
like this one believer I should make it so that I can have peace in the house and when God has blessed all of you remain faithful to the Lord obey the word of the Lord do not destroy your house go and ask those people who do it they are biting their hand call upon the name of the Lord God will help you all what Bible says is the kingdom of God not in the kingdom of money that one does not give room for the laziness but God will have mercy upon whom he is going to have mercy upon do not do not do not underrate your wife Stop comparison of another woman with your wife. Stop comparison of another husband with your husband. Why can't you go lay down the God? This is my spouse. This is a dog. God is going to do it. He will do it. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us listen. Praise the Lord. the word of the Lord the Bible says my Jesus said my sheep heareth my voice he said and I know it then once I've got spoken and if you are a child of God you, you must hear the word twice over and over again and say yes Lord I will obey your word amen you know we are living in a world where our humor, our perspective towards God and towards His Word, as in a man's perspective towards the Word of God, is changing every day. No, but God's, God's perspective towards man remains the same. God's Word remains the same. God says, If you like me, I know man. So let us obey the Word of God that we've heard, and it shall be well with us in Jesus' name. You're welcome to, once again, welcome to our Sunday service for today. Today is Sunday, and every Sunday like this, we gather here for our Sunday service. Our service starts by 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. and sometimes 12 p.m. as the Lord leads. Amen. And in the evening, Either Hubs Fellowship, Evangelism and Visitation, which is being alternated. In the first, second, and third, we do go, we do, do our Hubs Fellowship in the last Sunday of the morning and evening. With our visitation and evangelism. As we find out the time to come out and participate, the Lord will visit you in Jesus' name. On Monday is a Bible study. It's good to study the Word of God. It's very, very good to be a Bible student and to know the Word of God so that you might be able to stand and define the Word of Truth. So come along with a Bible study. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. And also invite the people to come. If Bible study starts by 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., Two hours with the Lord will change your life forever. Amen. From 7 to 9 p.m. is the time where we we'll come and we we'll get a microscopic view of the of the Word of God. The things that you read, you read that before, you don't understand. Come, the Lord God will open your eyes to new meaning of His Word in Jesus' name. On Thursday is a online conference prayer. From 6 p.m. to 7 
PM. Most of us have not been joining, including me. The Lord will help us to repent and to be part of it in Jesus' name. It starts by 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Then we will come together to pray and to intercede. We say we should pray without season. We have come to learn that no man is greater than his prayer life. You can never, never be greater than your prayer life. You might preach, you might shout, you might worship, you might praise, but your prayer life can never, never be greater than your prayer life. So whenever there's opportunity for us to come together and pray, I will say pray without season. Pray without season. Let us have that so that the devil will not attack our prayer life and our devotional life in Jesus' name. And also our convention, national convention is coming up July 27 to 30. Make it a time with the Lord, a moment with the Lord. And if we find that time, the Lord God is going to meet us according to our needs in Jesus' name. I think that should be all the announcement for, for now. If there is any announcement to be related to us later on. God bless you. Amen. Offering time. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. We bless your holy name. I will thank you for whom you are. Thank you because you give it the power to make words. But you have blessed us for this purpose that we might use it for your glory. But for bring oh God to you, we ask that you will enrich us, that you will improve our lives will expand our coast by commit oh God as many oh God who don't have to give that provide for them and give them the has to give that we will know the importance of giving to your work that at the end oh God none of us here will be lacking behind of your divine blessings in Jesus name we pray amen My eyes have seen, my eyes have heard, my mouth will talk about the goodness of God. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard, my mouth will talk about the goodness of God. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard, my mouth will talk about the goodness of God, my eyes have seen, my ears have heard, my mouth we talk about the goodness of God. It's time for praise and worship. Let's rise to our feet. We're gonna shake our body, shake up the weakness. strength of the Lord will come into us as we praise him in Jesus name. We bless the Lord for his faithfulness. Let's bless God once again this morning because in his presence there's fullness of joy. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. There's no place we'd rather be than in your presence. In your presence, there's fullness of joy. In your presence, there's peace. There's strength. There's love. Everything we need is in your presence. I just 
our hands to the Lord this morning. For this church, put your hands to the Lord this morning. Our God is good. Say, our God is good. Thank God. Are you ready to praise the Lord this morning? I am. What about you? Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise. 
We shall quickly go to our Bible reading, the book of Acts, chapter 8. The book of Acts, chapter 8. Chapter 8. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsies, and that were lame, were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness, and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, 
If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. May God bless his word in our heart in Jesus. We shall listen to Kaya's song.
Almighty Father, we thank you, Lord, for grace you have given to us once again to lie under your feet. We thank you, Lord, because of us as a family we are brought together. We thank you, Lord, because of the individual life. We thank you, Lord, because of the family life. We thank you, Lord, because of all the children you have given to us. We thank you, Lord, because of the testimony that is abound. That in every area, everywhere we go, people see the sign of Christianity in us. And they are making us as an example to other people, Almighty oh, Father. The glory you have given to us, the crown you have given to us, the special thing that is beyond human understanding that is shining in our life, you are put in our life by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ.